Good morning to one and all. We invite you to stand as you are able and worship with us this morning. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh, how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord, our Rescuer. And there is good news for the captive, and good news for the shame, there is good news for the one who walked away, there is good news for the doubter, the one religion failed. For the good Lord has come to seek and save. Cause he's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. He is beauty for the blind man, riches for the poor, and friendship for the one the world ignores. He is pasture for the weary, and rest for those who strive, for the good Lord is the way, the truth, the life. Yes, the good Lord is the way, the truth, the life. Cause he's our rescuer, he's our rescuer, we are free from sin forevermore. We will sweet the sound, oh how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord our rescuer. So come and be chainless, come and be fearless, come to the foot of Calvary, cause there is redemption for every affliction here at the foot of Calvary. Let's sing that again. Come and be chainless, come and be chainless, come and be fearless. Come to the foot of Calvary, cause there is redemption for every affliction here at the foot of Calvary. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer, we are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh, how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord, our rescuer. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer, we are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. Amen. The kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty.
to greet one another with signs of Christ's peace as you take your seats this morning. Good morning again and welcome to worship at Grace United Methodist Church. We're glad that you are here. We welcome those who are worshiping with us online as well. And if we've not had a chance to meet, we want to introduce ourselves to you. So I am Jessica. I'm one of the pastors here. My name is Drew. I get to be one of the pastors here too. Welcome one and all, especially if it's your first time worshiping with us. We are glad that you were led to Grace and we hope that today is a blessing. And we want to invite you to connect with us, so please take a moment to fill out a connect card. You'll find these in the pew in front of you. You can fill out the paper version or the electronic version. Um, if you're worshiping online, there's a link to click right there to fill this out as well. And then if you do fill out a paper copy, you can drop it in one of the baskets uh, a little later in the service along with any offerings that you brought with you today. That's right. We are continuing our end of summer sermon series, Signed, Sealed, Delivered, A Trip Through the Book of Ephesians. Uh, and today, we've made it to Ephesians chapter 4, where Paul calls himself a prisoner. And so together, we're going to ponder what Paul's message in Ephesians has to do with Elvis's song, The Jailhouse Rock. <laughs> pray for us. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, let your continual mercy cleanse and defend your church. And because we cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern us always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our worship continues now with our children's moments. We invite the children of the church to come on down. At the end of the children's moment, the kids are invited to go to Pop Out Church. Oh, actually, no, not Pop Out Church. Today's the first Sunday of the month. Sorry. I gotcha. Uh, gotcha. 
it's Family Worship Sunday, so our, the kids are invited to stick around after Children's Moment and be a part of the whole service with us, including the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Hello. I think the black mic is ready for you. Let's see here. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Good morning. That gave Miss Anna's heart a little bit of time to settle down after she heard there was a pop-out church that she had planned for. <laughs> so I want to ask you guys a question. How many of you have ever played hide and seek? Raise your hand. Okay. Now put your hand down. How many of you have ever played hide and seek, but the people you were hiding from didn't know you were playing hide and seek? Yeah, okay, we got one. Okay, we got a couple honest people, right? How many of you have ever, like, hidden from your parents, but you forgot to tell your parents you were going to hide, and then they panicked? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And <laughs> I want to tell you about a time when I was in preschool. I was four years old. And it was time to clean up our toys after playtime. So how many of you like cleaning up your toys? Yeah. Okay, we got one. There's a good one. Okay, yeah. Don't, uh, mm. Okay, so I'm just kidding. You do like to clean up your toys. Well, I did not want to clean up my toys. So there was this play kitchen there was this play kitchen, and I decided I was going to go hide in one of the little cabinets in the play kitchen. And I got in there, and unfortunately, somebody moved something in front of the play cabinet, and I couldn't get out. I was trapped. I was stuck. I was locked in there, and I started banging on the cabinet, but nobody could hear me because it was so loud in the classroom. And I was probably in that cabinet for like two hours. Just kidding. It was like a minute and a half, but it felt like two hours. I was trying to get out of there. And finally, my teacher, Miss Pam, she heard me. And she came and she moved the stuff out of the way of the cabinet. And she got me out. And I was crying. And I was so sad. And I stayed by Miss Pam's side all day. For the rest of the day. I did not leave her sight because she freed me. She got me out of that cabinet. And today we're going to hear Paul talk about in a letter about being locked up as well. And what happens when somebody sets you free. So can we pray? All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for setting us free let us always stick by your side. Amen. Okay, now remember, we're going to go back to our grown-ups because there is no pop-out church today. Thank you. Our worship continues now with an offering of music. This is a good time to fill out your Connect cards and otherwise continue to center your hearts for worship. same old voice tell the same old lies if you'll try to fill those same old holes inside there's a better life there's a better life if you've got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a way made if you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a savior. Shake and savor if you've got chains. 
He's a chain breaker. Our worship continues now with the reading of scripture. Reagan Grandy is our scripture reader. As she comes forward, I invite you to stand as you are able and listen for the word of the Lord. to the Ephesians. Listen for the word of the Lord. I am a prisoner in the Lord, so I am asking you to live a life worthy of what God chose for you. Don't be proud at all. Be completely gentle. Be patient. Put up with one another in love. The Holy Spirit makes you one in every way, so try your best to remain as one. Let peace keep you together. There is one body and one spirit. You were appointed to one hope when you were chosen. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. May there is one God and Father of all. He is over everything. He is through everything. He is in everything. But each one of us has received a gift of grace. These gifts are given to us by Christ. That is what the scripture says. That when he went up to take his place on high, that he took many prisoners, he gave gifts to his people. What does he went up mean? It can only mean he also came down to lower earthly places. The one who came up is the same one who went down. He went up higher than all the heavens. That he did it in order to fill all of creation. So that Christ himself they gave the gift of the apostles to the church. He gave the prophets and those who preach the good news. He also gave the pastors and teachers as a gift to the church. He gave all of these people so that they might prepare God's people to serve. Then the body of faith, the, the body of Christ, will be built up be, that will continue until we all become one in faith. We will also become one in the knowledge of God's Son. Then we will be grown up in faith. We will receive everything that Christ has for us. We will no longer be babies in faith. We won't be like ships tossed around by the waves. We won't be blown here and there by every new teaching. We won't be blown around by cleverness and tricks. Certain people use them to hide their evil plans. Instead, we will speak the truth in love. So we will grow up in every way to become... the body of Christ. Christ is the head of the body. He makes the whole body grown and build itself up in love. Under the control of Christ, each part of the body does its work. It supports the other parts in a way the body is joined and held together. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Way to go, Reagan. I gave you a big one, and you did great. That was actually a different translation, because uh, both at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, we have children reading the scripture. Um, and I just want to put in a plug, that's the NIRV, New International Readers Version, and it's translated at a third grade reading level, so that children can uh, read it and enjoy it. And it reminds me that um, it's been part of the ministry of the church for centuries, uh, to establish church schools where there are no schools for the education of children, um, which is always a good thing. But part of why the church is committed to education is so that children can learn to read the scriptures and come to know the love of God revealed there. Um, so thank you, Reagan, for blessing us today. Uh, before we get to the sermon, I want to give you a quick generosity update. 
Uh, first is an update on a district-wide effort that I mentioned a couple weeks ago where um, churches, United Methodist churches across the district are working to raise money to buy a $40,000 handicap accessible van for a family in Centerville, Virginia, that needs one badly. Uh, and this is initiated by our district superintendent and all the churches have been invited to participate. I mentioned that to you a couple weeks ago and uh, a number of you have given to the Caring and Sharing Fund for that project. In fact, you've given over $1,500 to that end, which is fantastic. Uh, among the folks that gave a gift, one or one family, and that was the first gift that they gave to Grace was for that particular effort. Uh, and that means that we're gonna be able to make good on our pledge to give $5,000 from our caring and sharing fund to this effort. And now, it's not a competition, but <laughs> the, in the scriptures, Paul tells us to outdo one another in showing love for others. Uh, and I want you to know that you are the number one contributing church to this effort so far. Uh, and you need to know that um, th because it's part of who you are, to be a generous church. Uh, and so together, we're hoping across the district to raise enough funds to buy this van. And I wanted to thank you for your get generosity and for your gifts. I also wanted to share an update on our overall general mission and ministry fund. Um, that's what funds our regular everyday mission and ministry through the year. A couple weeks ago, I mentioned we're hitting the summer slump, uh, which is normal. Uh, I wanted you to know that this year's slump is a little slumpier than usual. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one is that um, we had to spend down some of our rainy day fund uh, to cover the cost of mold remediation that we did about a year ago, which means we just don't have as, no, as much buffer in, our, in the bank as usual. Um, the other reason is that this year, we set some pretty aggressive ministry goals. And so our investment in mission and ministry has been aggressive too. Uh, and so that means we're doing good ministry and it means that we're in a different situation this summer than most summers. So I wanted to let you know that, mostly for your awareness, um, but also in case you would like to have an impact on that. If it would bless you uh, to give an additional gift to your normal giving this August, that would help us, that would bless the church. Uh, and so here's the ask. First, take a minute to consider your capacity to give an August gift, uh, above and beyond your normal giving. Um, would you be willing to sacrifice a dinner out or an excursion on your next cruise or something like that uh, and instead invest that in the mission and the ministry of the church? Um, if so, we want to encourage you to do that this August. If, I did a little bit of math, if a third to a half of us gave a gift of $100, $200, $300 this August, we could erase the slump and be good to go for the fall. If all of us gave an additional August gift of that size, 100, 200, 300 or more, um, we would erase the slump and we would have a surplus heading into the fall, which would mean we could conf confidently continue to pursue our ministry goals. Um, so I wanted you to be aware of that uh, because these are your gifts that God is putting to good use. Um, and this is your church's ministry that you have a chance to impact this summer. Um, but all of that needs to be, um, needs to be held in balance with the fact that you are a generous church and as your pastor, I'm proud of you for what you continue to accomplish through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. So thank you. With that, let us seek the grace of God today with a trip to Graceland. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to receive your word, your word written in the scriptures, your word proclaimed in the church, your word made flesh in Jesus Christ. Amen. Just imagine it. A prison warden throws a party in the county jail. The prison band is there and they begin to wail. The band is jumping and the joint, which is to say the prison, begins to swing. And you start to hear the sound of hundreds of knocked out jailbirds sing. This is not a normal jail. 
Prisoner number 47 has paired off with prisoner number three. On a normal day, they'd shiv one another out in the yard, but now they're delighted, trading compliments, dancing. The warden himself approaches some sad sack weeping in the corner all alone and insists he join in, even if the only dance partner he can find is a wooden chair. Again, this is weird. It's not your typical day at the penitentiary that Elvis portrays. It's not what you would expect from or for an incarcerated mass, let alone from their warden. But this is no ordinary jail. This is the jailhouse rock. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Chapter four of Paul's letter to the Ephesians opens with these words. I, therefore, a prisoner in the Lord. I, therefore, a prisoner in the Lord. St. Paul is, of course, an actual prisoner. This letter is written at least in part while he is in prison for his illegal mission and ministry, and it is illegal. He's arrested repeatedly over the course of his career with cause. He is an insurrectionist of a sort. He's arrested for sowing rebellion, making people question, if not altogether, renounce their allegiance to Caesar and his empire. But Paul is not raising up violent militias. He's simply proclaiming a different Caesar altogether, a different king, the king, not Elvis, Jesus. The king of kings, Paul says, whose death and resurrection have freed Paul and all to whom he ministers from the tyranny of the kings and wardens of this world, making us citizens of heaven. There's a new warden in town, Paul says, one who has transformed the Roman instrument of capital punishment, the cross, from a cruel tool of death into a new way to life for all, even for the executioners. Paul is so convinced and converted and confident in his message that he's willing to be imprisoned for it. He will not let imprisonment stifle his jailhouse rock. If he's a prisoner, he's a prisoner for Jesus Christ, the Lord. But that's not quite what he calls himself here. He uses a different preposition. He's not a prisoner for Christ. He says it is Christ who first became a prisoner for him. Maybe it's not so much that he's doing all this for Christ, but he's doing all of this because of what Christ has done for Paul, to Paul. Paul is not just a prisoner for Christ, he is a prisoner of Christ. He uses that language elsewhere, that he is a prisoner of Christ, even a slave of Christ, who Paul calls his master. It was the risen Christ himself who confronted Paul on the road to Damascus. At the time, ironically, Paul was working as a corrections officer for the Pharisees. He was tracking, profiling, imprisoning, and executing Christians. A slave of the law and of his own nationalistic fervor, Paul was confronted by Jesus, convicted and imprisoned by this new warden, the risen Christ. When Christ knocked Paul off his horse and asked him, why are you persecuting me? Paul was struck blind until, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the patient, gentle ministry of the church, Paul became a servant himself, declaring Jesus as his Lord, his Savior, his Master, his Warden, his King. Paul will elsewhere say that the life of all Christians is lived out not just in memory of Christ or on Christ's behalf, but as prisoners of Christ, prisoners and servants of grace. The Christian life is lived out in allegiance to a living warden who has captured our hearts and has conscripted us into his eternal service. Paul is doing his ministry, his jailhouse rock, as a prisoner of Christ. But that's not the preposition he uses either, actually. No, he's not a prisoner for Christ, nor is he just a prisoner of Christ. He says, I, therefore, a prisoner in Christ. A prisoner in Christ. 
Elvis will have to help us here. Verse number five. Shifty Henry says to Bugs, for heaven's sake, no one's looking. The warden's too busy. Now's the time to make our break. Bugsy turned to Shifty and said, Nix, Nix, I want to stick around a while and get my kicks. Let's rock. Everybody, let's rock. And everybody in the whole cell block was dancing to the jailhouse rock. In this jailhouse, it's not just the warden that's changed, and it's not just the prisoners like Shifty and Bugs either. It is the jailhouse itself that has been transformed around them. From a dank prison anyone in their right mind would pray to spring from into a jailhouse, a home for prisoners, sinners, who now don't even want to leave. I, therefore, a prisoner in the Lord. In the Lord, Paul says. Jesus isn't just Paul's warden. Jesus is Paul's jailhouse. Therefore, he says, when Christ ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive and gave gifts to his people. And who is he who ascended on high but the one who first descended as a prisoner, even to the grave, into death? not to lock up, but to surround and liberate and fill all things. I, Paul, the prisoner in the Lord, beckon you, he says, I beg you, you who were enslaved by sin and death, you sad sacks in the corner weeping all alone, you shifties and bugsies with one foot out the door, you would-be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, I beg you as I beckon you, do the jailhouse rock with me. Receive and live this life which is worthy of our living warden's calling. With humility and humor, gentleness and generosity, patience and perseverance, bearing with one another, making every effort at your disposal by your prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness, time, talent, treasure, make every effort to do the jailhouse rock. One of you prisoners here at Grace not long ago thought you might have to bust out of the joint. You were considering leaving the church amid a denominational disagreement on an important question of theology and practice, but ultimately, you have stayed. In so doing, you have maintained our unity in the bond of peace. That's the jailhouse rock. Several others of you have witnessed a fellow parishioner or prisoner who spends her time, talent, and treasure more than generously to minister to the grieving. When she has found herself now in the midst of grief too deep for words, you have surrounded her and are ministering to her as she has to you. That's the jailhouse rock. And one of you, for decades now, have dedicated yourself to teaching Sunday school to children, which is a sentence many of us would seek an appeal on. But you have served the sentence faithfully, patiently, gently introducing children to the joys of the jailhouse into which they've been baptized. This is life in Jesus's jailhouse. This is the jailhouse rock. The fact of the matter is that there is no act of ministry or generosity no prayer uttered, no gift given which exists outside of Jesus' jailhouse. The risen Christ has laid claim to it all. He has overcome the world, imprisoning it and filling it with his grace. And he's doing so even now through your life together. Likewise, there is no charge, no offense, no infraction no failure which occurs outside of the warden's view, nor any that shall be judged by any other judge or warden than this Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, our judge, our warden, our savior, the king. 
He comes again today to throw a party in the jailhouse that is his church. He's even arranged for the prison band to play and laid out quite a spread. He beckons you. Hear him. He begs you. Come to the table. Live the life of those imprisoned in grace. Do the jailhouse rock with Christ, for Christ, and in Christ, who is our host, our judge, our jailhouse, and our eternal home. Amen. Trusting in God's grace, our worship continues now with a time of prayer on behalf of the church and the world. Let us pray together. Loving God, Christ our King, we give thanks that you are our rescuer, our shelter in the storm, our loving Savior, our forever friend. When life gets dark, you are the light that guides our way making the path clear and a way forward. We give thanks for all the ways that you set us free, free from sin, free from shame, and free to fully live the lives to which we have been called. Help us, Lord, to live lives worthy of the life you chose for us, to fully share the gifts you have given us and to fully live into the calling for which you have equipped us so that we may grow as faithful Christians and together as the body of Christ. May we abide in you and live in you and be covered by your grace. Have mercy upon us, most loving God. In your compassion, forgive our sins, those known and unknown, things done and left undone, and uphold us by your Holy Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. The Lord is faithful and true slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our prayers are heard and our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our worship continues now with the sacrament of Holy Communion. I invite you to stand as you are able for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and through your prophets spoke to us your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of power, power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, 
to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord took bread, gave thanks to you, O God, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as prisoners of grace and children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who Who art art in in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come. come. Thy Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Having descended in the cross, the ascended Christ gives gifts to his people. Behold the gifts of God. The bread and cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the body and lifeblood of Christ. Amen. Would those who are prepared to help serve come forward at this time? All others, you may be seated. Here at Grace, we celebrate an open table, which means you don't have to be a member of this or any church to come and receive. You simply need to have a desire to receive what is offered here, and that is the presence, grace, body, and blood of Christ given for you. In a moment, you'll be invited to come forward. You'll be offered a piece of bread, which you can dip in the cup to receive both together. You're also welcome to receive the bread alone, and then we have individual servings of the cup on either side of the kneeling rail. Uh, We have gluten-free elements available if that's what you need. And you're also welcome to remain seated if you're not comfortable receiving, but please do know you are invited and welcome. This table of the Lord is the table that the Lord has set for us. This is the party that the Lord is throwing for us, which simultaneously frees us from sin and death and welcomes us into the life of service with Christ our Lord. You're invited to come. try to stand and start to fall there was Jesus 
When this life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus In the waiting in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, For this man who needs amazing kind of grace For forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay Well, I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day There was Jesus In the rain, in the searching in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, and when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, there was Jesus on the mountain in the valley. In the shadows of the alleys, it was Jesus. and in the fire in the flood, it was Jesus. always is and always was. No, I never walk alone. In the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, there was Jesus. Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, there was Jesus. There was Jesus. Together, let us join in the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite you to stand as you are able and join together in our closing worship song. Yes, 
my life like ashes on the waves and leave behind all of my selfish ways. My past is gone, now all that's left is grace, to live is Christ, to die is gain. are truly thankful you're able to join us for worship today, especially if it was your first time worshiping with us. We are glad you were led to grace, and we hope that that's exactly what you found here. We want to make sure you know about a few ways to remain engaged with grace in the days ahead. Uh, one of those is church chat today at noon. Uh, this is something we do on the first Sunday of every month. You'll get to come and hear a brief update from the board and then ask any questions you've got about what's going on in our church and community. So that's at noon at the Good Shepherd window. I don't know if you guys have heard, but it is back to school season. Yes. Really? I'm not feeling yeah. that. I'm not feeling that. But we're I'm excited. At Grace. I am excited. <laughs> we're excited because we have some fun stuff in store. One of the things that's happening right now is we are partnering with Bennett Elementary School and also our neighbors at Georgetown South to do a back to school supply collection. And there are um, shopping lists in the Narthex right by our donation bin, or you can check your weekly. Um, emails for that information or look online, but uh, we appreciate your generosity in bringing in some school supplies. 
On August 18th, there's a couple things happening. One is that we are having our annual tradition of backpack uh, blessings. And so we invite you to bring your backpacks, kiddos, um, adults, bring in your work bag, your purse, your laptop case, whatever you have, and we are going to bless those um, during both of the church services that day. And then also, that is the day that our Sunday school will be kicking back off. So our children in youth classes will be meeting. Um, Upstreet will kick off. The junior high, sixth through eighth grade Sunday school class will kick off, as well as our high school uh, youth Sunday school class. And so if you have any questions about that, reach out and let us know. But that will be happening during the 10 o'clock engagement hour. When you drop your kids and teenagers off at Sunday school on that 18th, um, you can then come to a pastor class. Uh, that I get to teach. Uh, this one is on Methodism 101, uh, what it means to be United Methodist, and um, why I think it's fun to be Methodist. Uh, that's going to be a three-week class during that 10 o'clock engagement hour, and we hope that you can be a part of it. Lastly, we want to invite you to join us in the fellowship hall after worship for our all-ages summer Sunday school. Uh, we're continuing that through the rest of the summer, and people are invited, all ages, all abilities, all together in the fellowship hall at 10 o'clock. Now receive this final benediction. Go from this place to do the jailhouse rock, to live and serve as prisoners of grace, trusting that your past, your present, your future have all been claimed by the one Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I don't know who my helper is today.